Hi Year 10, Mr. Tapley here for your next lesson of Year 10 History. Uh, this lesson we are looking at multiculturalism and migration. So developing our understanding of how different waves of migration or immigration uh, over the past 50 years have led to the multiculturalism in Australia today. That's one of my favorite things about history is learning about how we got here. So how the modern world, how our present has been shaped by the past. So why is that as it is today? Oh, it's because of this, this, and this that occurred 50 or even 100 years ago. Our success criteria is to define the term multiculturalism. What does it mean? And then outline uh, one or two key migration events uh, in Australian history. In the first 60 years of Australian history, migrants were asked to assimilate to an Australian identity. However, you cannot expect generations of people to deny and suppress their cultural history. It's like y'all in class. I can expect you to be quiet for five minutes, but I can't expect you to be quiet for the entire class. <laughs> you can't expect people to be quiet for all of history. As government policy shifted from assimilation to integration, so y'all can be Australian and have a little bit of your old culture, uh, in the 1950s and 1960s, a new perspective developed, and that was called multiculturalism. Multiculturalism actively accepts and embraces the cultural practices and traditions of migrants to Australia. The wide Australia policy was replaced uh, with a new inclusive immigration ideology that would dramatically change our future. Without multiculturalism, without the end of white Australia, most of us wouldn't be here. Australia would be a very different place. This shift was recognized with the creation of the 1975 Racial Discrimination Act declaring all people must be treated equally, regardless of their race, color, heritage, or national ethnic origin. That might sound like common sense stuff to you now, but in the 70s, that was a big deal. <laughs> For the government to come out and say, it's against the law to be racist, that was a big moment. That was like, oh damn, we're serious about this. Um, and I just quite like this little, I don't know, timeline. <laughs> if you guys are trying to remember in three words, immigration policy from Australia, you think assimilation, and then the events related to that, or that led up to that, integration, and then multiculturalism. That's a three-word three, three word summary of the unit we've done for the past couple of weeks. Australian immigration, waves of migration. So Australia is an immigration nation founded by British immigrants and convicts. <laughs> Each chapter in our history has witnessed a new wave of migration. So we had the gold rush. We had uh, those first settlers who came out to Australia with uh, old mate Captain Cook. We've had post-World War II migration. We've had Vietnam War, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these waves of migration are basically mass increases in migrants as a result of major national or global events. The populate or perish post-World War II migration campaign would lead to an uh, Australian immigration policy that was dramatically different. We completely changed it. A shift towards an inclusive and multicultural migration program witnessed further waves of migration. So we opened up the door to other people, other refugees uh, from events such as the Vietnam War, uh, the Rwandan genocide, Tiananmen Square, US-Iraq War, uh, and the Sri Lankan Civil War, the Tamils. This video here, I highly recommend, that's from our friends Behind the News, Good Australian Network. And it gives you, I guess, a little three minute summary of um, the different waves of migration. So the different people who have come to Australia from different countries. So I recommend watching that. Quick little three minute summary. However, <laughs> we don't live in a perfect society. Uh, opposition to multiculturalism. Unfortunately, support for multiculturalism is not universal. So migrants have always experienced discrimination, challenges, suffering, and suspicion. Uh, you know, I'm suspicious of you, I don't trust you, you're different, I'm afraid of you, or I'm scared of you, or I'm angry at you <laughs> because I don't understand you. Uh, and these things have led to, this fear, this discrimination has led to cultural misunderstandings and violence, such as the Cronulla virus, uh, which were 2005, 2006, I think, so a bit before your time, maybe. Um, but I remember them occurring in high school because the uh, school that I was at, or Mount Waverley Secondary, uh, banned Australian flags from their swimming sports like the next year because they were afraid that it would be setting off. Anyway, you'll have to read about the Cronulla rights. Um, in recent years, immigration has become a political issue as opposed to a humanitarian cause. So it seems really common sense to want to help people, you know, help refugees come to a new country, start a new life. But it's not a humanitarian issue now, it's politics, basically. So different political parties appeal to voters 
who fear immigrants taking our jobs or disrupting the social unity of Australian life. And then these misconceptions, that was a hard word, uh, misconceptions are shared by media outlets. That kind of furthers the cycle, this uh, fake news, if you will, <laughs> about uh, refugees and about migrants. The rise in popularity of anti-immigrant political parties, such as Pauline Hanson's One Nation policy uh, party, and the mandatory detention government program uh, are evidence that more needs to be done to realize the ideals of multiculturalism in Australia. So although we have shifted to a multicultural society, not everyone's on board. <laughs> so we still have a ways to go uh, to persuade everyone that this is the right path and that we shouldn't go back to a white Australia policy. So uh, with that background information, I'd like you guys to read pages 237 and 238 of chapter five and look at one of the events that triggered a wave of migration to Australia. So I'll show you where that is in the textbook. So it's in chapter five, about the end of the White Australia policy, do, 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 starting in 237. So this page here, and you can see it goes through different events of uh, migration. So it talks about the Vietnam War. So that's one event you can select. It talks about uh, Indonesia and East Timor. It's another event, Civil War in Lebanon, Africa, Tiananmen Square, Yugoslavia. Serbia, Croatia. We have a very high uh, Serbian Croatian population in Melbourne. You see it at the tennis every year, at the Australian Open, all the Serbians and Croatians come out and support their, uh, their tennis players. Uh, and this is the US Afghanistan Iraq war, and then the Civil War Sri Lanka. So, step one select an event relating to waves of migration in Australia. And then I just want you to really tell me what that event is. So, educate Mr. Tapley, please, on what was that event. So what was the Vietnam War? What was the US Iraq War, Tiananmen Square? So give me the key dates, details, location. So what country was it from? Uh, question two, why did this event create a migrant refugee crisis? So why did this event lead to lots of people needing to find a new home? So maybe it was uh, political oppression, maybe it was just fleeing violence, maybe there was a natural disaster that occurred. Question three, how did Australia respond to this event? So in some of these events, Australia was like, yeah, come on in, bro. Some of these events, we were like, nah, stay back. <laughs> As Australia's migration policy changed over time, uh, obviously our response to migrants, bringing them in, treating them nicely, uh, was a bit different. Uh, so tell me specifically, how did Australia respond to that event? Uh, you will need a little bit of extra research to help you with some of these questions. So I recommend checking out this timeline from SBS. This gives you the dates and a few key details on some of those events we looked at. So we've got uh, Vietnam War from the 70s to the early 80s, Cambodia, Vietnam, Middle East. Ugh, that was a bad year, Pacific Ocean. Anyway, <laughs> so three questions. Have a read of 237, 238 to pick an event. Do a bit of research to answer those three questions. And uh, yeah, that's all you're looking at for this lesson, guys. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, best of luck. Hope you're well and cheers.